Hey there folks, Elder Law Attorney Patrick Kelleher coming to you from our Elder Law Care Center here, Hanover, Massachusetts. Folks, today's question is, how do you create an estate plan if you're married and you do not live with your spouse? So how do you go forward and create your will and your trust if you and your spouse live separately? Or maybe even if you and your spouse live under the same roof, but you have different goals, you might be estranged, and you're not going to go forward and get divorced, but you want to create your respective estate plans, or at least one of you is driven to create your estate plan. Folks, stay tuned because I will answer that question momentarily. Hey folks, Elder Law Care Attorney Patrick Kelleher. You may know me as the author of the book, How to Slay the Four-Headed Beast of Estate Planning and Elder Law. So you can pick up a copy on Amazon if you like, or go to elderlawcare.com to learn more. Folks, the question is, how do you create an estate plan if you are married and you do not live with your spouse or if you are married and you want to plan independently? Folks, that is somewhat of a precarious situation and things that may come into the attorney's mind is, can I represent, we'll say Bill and Mary, and say Bill shows up at the elder law attorney's office and says, I want to create a will, I want to create a trust, but my wife Mary is not interested. And we've had cases like that, no names of course, but usually there's a reason for it. From my experience, it might be a second or subsequent marriage. And let's say Bill might be older, 10, 15 years older sometimes in that second or subsequent marriage than their spouse, Mary. Mary may still be working in the third quarter of life, but Bill, being 10 to 15 years older, is in the fourth quarter, or maybe late fourth quarter of life, and really has a strong yearning to create his legacy, to leave something behind when he leaves this earth. But Mary, busy focused on her profession, may not be interested. And also folks, keep in mind, this is often a second or subsequent marriage. So Mary has her children perhaps, or no children from a first marriage or relationship. And Bill, from my experience, will often have children, often older children from his first marriage or first relationship. And in a lot of these cases, from my experience, the younger children of the second or subsequent marriage sometimes may be better off because now you had dual spouses taking care of them, providing for them, clothing them, educating them, which put them on a brighter path in their professional lives. And then sometimes we'll say Bill's children that are a little bit older may have not have had all those opportunities in their lives and they may have a need for an inheritance or a legacy to be shared with them. So that is just some of the fact pattern of the history of these type of matters in the real world that I've experienced. That being said, the elder law attorney first has to assess and evaluate, can I represent Bill and not Mary? Answer may be yes, so long as Mary is not a prior client to avoid any ethical issues or conflicts of interest and things of that nature. Always advisable also for that client to sign off and have the attorney sign off on potential conflict waivers as well, if necessary and needed. But long and short of it, Bill should be able to go forward with his estate or elder law attorney and memorialize his estate plan. A couple of caveats and warnings, things to look out for. Can Bill disinherit his wife Mary and say, hey, Mary and I had a good life and Mary has enough, she's gainfully employed, she has her 401k in her retirement and she inherited something from her late parents, she doesn't need anything. The answer is typically no. At least here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there's a really not an easy way. You cannot legally disinherit your spouse entirely because there's a Massachusetts general law called the spousal elective share. The spousal elective share even if Bill did not do a will or he looked to exclude his wife Mary from his estate plan, his wife Mary can elect that spousal elective share and make a claim to roughly one third of her late husband Bill's estate. And in some regards, the spousal elective share would allow her to make a share or a claim, I should say, to one half of Bill's estate in some situations as well. So that spousal elective share really protects that surviving spouse. Let's look at also specific assets. It's really, really important to, when you're working with someone, 
to make sure that they create an outline of all the assets they share together. Bill and Mary share all these assets together. And so when Bill is creating his trust in step one of the process, step two of our process is called trust funding, transferring your treasures into your treasure chest. Bill likely will not be able to transfer any shared assets that he holds with his wife, Mary. He likely will be able to transfer assets that are in his name individually and that he made contributions to himself individually and personally. He will likely be able to transfer those assets to his trust or his treasure chest. The jointly held assets, especially the manner, the way the title is held, is really a matter for the elder law attorney to assess closely, assess and evaluate carefully those assets. But as a general rule, maybe Bill cannot transfer those jointly held assets. Let's talk qualified retirement accounts. Bill holds a 401k from his employer. Can he disinherit his wife, Mary, from that 401k? He may want to, but the ERISA laws say he cannot. Employment law, the Employment Retirement Income Security Act will protect the surviving spouse for 401ks where Bill will not be able to disinherit his wife on his 401k. The only way he could do that, his wife Mary would have to sign a waiver. She would have to be given due notice and she would have to waive her rights to being the primary beneficiary there. Let's turn the page. Will Bill be able to disinherit his wife Mary on his IRA, his individual retirement account, and the answer changes, and the answer is typically yes, because ERISA laws do not govern and protect IRAs like they do on 401ks. There's a distinction there and a world of difference there, folks. So 401k, typically Bill will not be able to disinherit his spouse. However, the IRA, typically he would be able to disinherit his spouse because IRAs are not governed by the ERISA federal laws when it comes to retirement accounts. Folks, if this video is helpful, please scroll down, leave a comment, post a question, and a member of our Elder Law Care team will get back to you as soon as possible. If you would like to learn more, go to elderlawcare.com, pick up a copy of our book, How to Slay the Metaphorical Four-Headed Beast of Estate Planning and Elder Law. You can do that on Amazon. You can pick up the book in paperback, on Kindle, or on Audible. I read the book myself on Audible, and you can listen to the book for about two hours or so, because the more you learn, folks, the more of an informed consumer you will be, and the more of the informed consumer you will be, the stronger your shield, and the sharper your sword will be to slay the metaphorical beast of estate planning and elder law. Folks, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time at elderlawcare.com.